Okay, let's continue the discussion about section 3.3. .3. Section 3.3 .3 is a properties of our functions. Last time, we discussed the even odd functions. So f is called even if f negative x is fx. So if you have the graph, it's easy to see that. To have an even function, the left branch and right branch should be identical. They are symmetric about the y-axis. And f is called odd. Oh, sorry, even. f is called odd if f negative x is negative fx. Okay, odd function is like this, like you have a, a fan, you rotate, you ro rotate pi reading, you rotate the right branch, pi reading, you get the left branch. So it's a rotation invariant. Here is a mirror invariant. Okay, so we call them even odd because of the following examples. So if we have function, for example, constant function, or x squared, or x to 4, x to 6, x to 8, all the even powers, then they are, they are all even functions. For even power functions, they are even functions. If we have fx equals x, x cubed, x5, x7, all the power, then they are all the functions. Okay, so even power function, even function. All the power function, all the functions. And that's a, that's a reason we, we give the such name. And we also know that from the experience or from the example, we know that if you have an even function and plus another even function, it's still an even function. If you have an odd function plus an odd function, it's still an odd function. But if you mix them, even function plus odd function is not even, not odd. Okay, so you cannot mix two things. So that's uh, the basic stuff we learned last time uh, before we finish it. Okay, now today we're going to study the increasing decreasing property. Okay, so first let's see the definition. We always start from the definition. A function f is increasing. Normally, it's on an open interval. If for any x1, x2 in the open interval, with x1 less than x2, okay? So x1 is less than x2. We have fx1 is less than fx2. You preserve the order. x1 less than x2, the image fx1 is less than fx2. So it's uh, increasing. And f is decreasing if for any x1, x2 in the open interval with x1 less than x2, x1 less than x2, you get fx1 is greater than fx2. Then this is called 
a decrease. And F is called constant. If for any x in the interval, the value of f x does not change. Okay, so. Let's see the, the example. If you have an in increasing function, when you have the graph, the increasing function will be like this. It's heading up. It's increasing. If you have a decreasing function, it's heading down, decreasing. If you have a constant function, it's just a horizontal line. Constant. Okay, so whenever you have a graph, you can easily determine the increasing decreasing property. Okay, and we can only say the function is increasing here, decreasing here, or constant here. But sometimes when you have a, a function, its graph may be very complex. So we can only say it's increasing over this interval decreasing over that interval and stuff. So for example, for example, we see here, assume your graph is like this. Graph here, you have a half circle, and then you up, and then you have a horizontal segment, and then it's going, okay? So assume we have the graph like this. And let's label them here. This is negative six. Here's negative two. Uh, this point, the corresponding point is negative four. And this is zero. And this is a three. And this point is six. Okay, let's just visualize, uh, estimate those values. And whenever you have such graph, you can see that F is increasing where here you see from four negative four to zero from negative four to zero the, the function is going up it's increasing on the negative four and the zero and f is decreasing uh, you see here from negative two to negative four you're going down, so a negative two, and sorry, negative six, negative four. Negative six, negative four is going down. And from three to six, the graph is going down. And on three, six, the graph is going down. Okay, so negative six, negative four, or three to six. And F is a constant from zero to three. Okay, so it's horizontal. It's horizontal. When the graph is horizontal, function is a, is a constant. So on different domains, the function may be different, increasing, and uh, uh, may have different properties. It could be increasing or decreasing or constant over the specific domains. Okay, so when we have this one, let's check this point, the point at negative four. At this negative four, this is the lowest point in its, uh, in its uh, neighborhood, in its uh, local part. And this point, it is also the, the, the lowest point. I mean, of course, this one is greater than this, but if you only check the small region, this is the lowest point. So the lowest point, we will call the local minimum value. The highest point, we will call the local maximum value. From the graph, we can have the other two concept. Okay, let's see the other two concept definition. 
F has a local maximum at point C if there is an open interval I containing C so that for all X in I in that open interval Fx is less than or equal to f of c. Okay, so local maximum maximum at c it means in the small neighborhood f of c is a is a maximum value. It could be very small, and in this case we call the f of c a local maximum. value of f so f has a local maximum at c the local maximum value is f of c okay so it's a the highest point and similarly f has has a local minimum at C if there is an open interval I containing C so that for all X in I Fx is greater than or equal to F of C so F of C is the lowest point then this is a local minimum and we call f of c a local minimum value so whenever you have a value it's a evaluation f at c when we say it has a local minimum at c okay when you get a value, you do the evaluation. When you don't have a number, uh, the let uh, the the word value, you don't do the evaluation. Okay, so that's a uh, local maximum and the local minimum. Okay, now let's check. For example. Assume we have some graph of certain function like this, and this is a negative one, and well, it will be very small. For, for, for example, let's say this is a point one, and here is a possibly like a two. And this is one two, yeah, and this is zero, and this part one two one two. Let's say assume this is two. This is a uh, point two. The corresponding y value, let's call it 0.2. Okay, the value is not exactly part. Let's see. When you check this negative one in the small neighborhood, when you say in the small neighborhood, you just cut, cut the, cut the graph. You see, you only check this part. You check this part. Can you see it? Yeah. You check this part. You see this uh, function has the uh, smallest value here. So f has a local minimum at negative 1. Okay? So you just you just cover cover rest of the graph just only check a small region around negative 1. And if you check this part a little bit at 0, you see, when we say it's 0 here. At 0 2 is the highest point so f has a local maximum at at zero 
negative 1, 0, they are from the x coordinate. And if we check this 2, if we check this 2, see here, oh, let's, let's cover. If we check this 2, this is uh, the bottom point. Okay, the bottom point means uh, f has a local minimum at 2. Okay, so here is the local minimum, here is the local maximum, here is the local minimum. Just narrow the, the domain of the function, you will get the uh, local stuff. Whenever you have a function, the graph of the function, you can easily see it. And, uh, okay, so they are the local minimum, local maximum. The local minimum value at this point, the local minimum value is f of c, f of negative 1. Remember, we just assume f, uh, f of negative 1 is point, point 0.1, so this is a point 0.1. And here, the local maximum value, so whenever you see value, is f of 0. It happens at 0, so you value at 0. f of 0 is 2. And this one, the local, the local minimum value, f of 2, f of 2 is 0.2, okay? So this is a local maximum or minimum values. They are the evaluation, they are the y value. They happen at x coordinate. The value are the y coordinate, okay? Okay, so this is a local stuff. Whenever we say local, you see here, of course, this point is higher than 2, but this is too far from 0, so we ignore it. We only consider the, the region of 0, a small region of 0. So so even though it's not, uh, this one is, is it's not bigger than this, but it doesn't matter. It's still a local uh, maximum value. Okay? Uh, of course, sometimes when you have a graph, for example, when you have a graph like this, we'll have a graph like this, and let's assume, let's do something, this is 1, 1, assume this is 2, and this is 3, oops, 3, this is point of 4. Assume the function is only defined over the domain one and four, closed. Okay, so that's uh, the total graph. Uh, and uh, from this total graph, you see here at three, this point is a, is a minimum value, is the lowest point over the whole domain. And here is the low, uh, highest point over the whole domain. Whenever this happens, then they are not, they are, of course, they are local maximum value and they are also so-called global maximum value. Global, in other sense, uh, we call it absolute maximum, okay? So that's uh, the next definition. Okay, so let F denote a function defined on an interval of interval interval i if there is a number c in i such that For any x in i, fx is always less than f of c. 
Dan Out of a seed is called The absolute maximum of f on the domain i on the domain i the same domain on the domain i and we say the absolute maximum of f occurs at C. Okay, so for the for every point on the domain, uh, f x is less than or equal to f of c. It's a it's a it's a, a absolutely the highest point. Then it's called absolute maximum. Okay, it's not just in its neighborhood. It's a highest point over whatever uh, well defined point. And this is okay. This is a uh, the definition for this point, the highest point, and then the definition for the lowest point says, if there is a number, a different number, let's call it a d, a number d in the domain i, such that, such that, for any x. In I, f x is greater than or equal to f of d. So all the points are higher than this sub point. Then f of d is the absolute minimum of f on I. We say that the absolute minimum of F occurs at D happens at d, it occurs at d, and the value is absolute maximum or absolute minimum. Okay, so that's uh, uh, the definition of uh, absolute maximum, absolute minimum. In that part, we say it is the minimum or maximum over the whole domain. In the relative, uh, sorry, in the local maximum minimum, it just say in the small neighborhood. That's a uh, the difference. Okay, so let's check the uh, examples. Uh, for example, if we have a graph like this, In this example, we can check this is uh, the lowest point. So this is absolute minimum. This point is the highest point. It's an absolute maximum. Okay? And of course, remember, absolute maximum is always a local, max, uh, local maximum. Absolute minimum is always a local minimum, except uh, when you have the boundary point, you have to uh, remove the, those uh, cases because uh, in the definition of a uh, uh, local maximum or minimum, we re we only require we only allow the open neighborhood, okay? And here, this is a uh, uh, the local minimum. And here, if we allow the uh, the random uh, general general interval, this is a uh, local maximum, but in the book we only allow the open neighbor, open interval, so it's okay. Okay, and
in the graph, if you see a circle, it means we remove this point. The function is not defined here. And when you have some graph like this, you will check this is absolute maximum. And this point is supposed to be the absolute minimum, but it's missing. So this function has no absolute minimum. It has no absolute minimum. So not every function has absolute minimum. Okay? Not every function has absolute ma minimum or ha has absolute maximum. Let's check this. Okay, assume we have some graph like this. And uh, let's assume this is a horizontal line. Then this is an absolute maximum. And every point on this horizontal line will be the absolute minimum. So the absolute min minimum may occur at many, many points. So it's not always that the function will have absolute minimum or maximum at a single point. Over, the, over every point on this interval, the function will have absolute minimum. Okay, and next case. Okay, so when we have a such thing like this, you will see this point is absolute minimum. And when we put an arrow here, it just means it go to infinite. It's just partial graph. So because it will climb up and up, go to infinity, so no absolute, absolute uh, maximum, no absolute maximum, because it climbs up to infinity. It, uh, the value is not missing, but just uh, there's no bound, there's no bound. Okay, so you see here, when we have something like this, it has one uh, absolute max and one absolute mean, and when we have some missing point, then it may may not have absolute max or mean. When you have this function go to infinity, it does not have absolute maximum value. So so absolute uh, values, absolute max or absolute mean, they are not achieved by whatever functions. Okay, so uh, that give us an uh, a question: One does a function always? have an absolute max value or absolute minimum value. One or what kind of a function definitely has absolute maximum or absolute minimum. And this theorem is answered by the, the following theorem. This theorem we will never prove it in our pre-calculus class. It's called the extreme value theorem. The extreme value theorem says if f is a continuous function, a continuous function whose domain is a closed interval, a v. then f has an absolute maximum and an at least one. When we say n, we mean at least one. An absolute minimum. on its domain AB. So uh, in this theorem, we have two important uh, hypotheses. First hypothesis, it has to be continuous. Uh, we, we didn't mention what is a, a continuous function. Continuous function basically just means the graph 
is connected. There's no hole. There's no break. So this is a continuous. No hole, no break. And the other thing is a closed. So you cannot have open interval. So it's, if it's open interval, the function may not uh, have absolute ma max or absolute mean. Okay. So c continuous interval over the closed interval. Sorry, continuous function over a closed interval. If f is a continuous function whose domain is a closed interval, so those two properties are the minimum requirement. If one of them is missing, then this theorem is not correct. Okay, so let's check here. Uh, this is not continuous because it has a hole. You see here, this is a continuous function. It definitely, the graph is connected. Then definitely it has absolute max and absolute mean. This one, even though it, it is not that smooth, it's not that round, it has corners, but still it is, it is connected. Then it has absolute mean and absolute max. And this part, you see it has a mean, but absolute mean, but this is open, it, you don't stop. So when you have an open interval, the function may not have absolute max or absolute mean. We just say it may not, but the theorem always say it always, okay? So that's uh, uh, the difference. Okay, so that's uh, uh, the absolute max and absolute mean. Absolute max, highest point, absolute mean, lowest point, okay? So you can always quickly determine it if you have the graph. The graph is uh, very powerful for us to determine the max and the mean. Continuous, this is continuous. Continuous means the graph is connected. No break, no hole. No break, no hole, then the function is, uh, is uh, uh, continuous. Okay, next. Next, we, uh, ha we, we are going to define a concept. We call it the average rate of change of a function. Average rate of change of a function. Average rate of change of function. What is average rate of change? So when you have, for example, you have a domain A and B, and you have a certain graph. Then here you have F A, here is F B. Okay, uh, from interval from A to B, the x changes. X changes, the change is B minus A. The difference is a change. And from when X is changed from A to B, FX changes from FA to FB, so the, the Y, because normally we say Y is FX. So Y also changes the change is FB minus fa. So this is uh, the change for x, the change for y. Then the rate of the change is the ratio of them. So that's uh, the definition. The definition says if a and b, of course, when you want to change, they are different. Uh, in the domain, of the function f. Okay, so first of all, these two points are in the domain. Then we define the average, average rate of change of f from 
a to b is defined by okay let's let's write this the average rate of change is we use this to to demonstrate difference and here's the difference delta difference of y difference of x so by definition it's a delta y over delta x the rate okay delta y is fb minus fa delta x is b minus a so this is a the working formula the average rate of the change is equal to fb minus fa this change of y over b minus of a the change of x okay so that's the definition so we will just have the definition then let's see the example what is the example find the average rate of change of the function fx equal to 3x squared so you have function you also need a and b okay so the first from 1 to 3 a is 1 b 3 in this case the average rate of the change is equal to f3 minus f1 over 3 minus 1 fb minus fa over b minus a fb minus fa over b minus a okay f3 so it's a 3 times 3 squared minus f1 3 times 1 squared 3 to 3 minus 1 is 2 3 times 3 to square 3 squared is 9 3 times 9 27 1 squared is 1 times 3 is a 3 so it's 24 over 2 is 12 okay so that's a, uh, the average rate of change from 1 to 3. Okay. And let's do another computation. From 5 to 7. The average rate of change from 5 to 7, F7 minus F5, 7 minus 5, okay? So F7 is a 3, 7 squared, F5, 3, 5 squared, because the function is 3, X squared, so you have X here, so X is 7, is a 7 squared, X is 5, 5 squared. 7 minus 5 is 2. Okay, 7, seven squared is 49, 49 times 3. 49 times 3 is uh, uh, 2. 3 times 4 is 12 plus 4. Okay, so it is equal to uh, 140, uh, 47. Uh, 5 squared is 25 times 3 is a 75 minus 75 divided by 2. Uh, 147 minus 75, this is 2, this is a 72. Over 2, it's a 36. Okay, so the average rate of the change of function is 36. Okay. That's cool. Okay, so that's our average rate of the change. Let's do my uh, algebraic uh, definition. Now let's try to see a similar cons a similar uh, computation, but it's from the, uh, the geometry. So the geometry it has a following definition. When you have a graph, for example, you have this graph, and you determine two points on the graph, two point. Two point, okay, so this first point, it has coordinate A, F, A. A, F, A, A is X coordinate, F, A is a Y coordinate. And second point, it has coordinate B, F, B, B, F, B. And 
We know that, assume, let's assume these two points are different, of course. We know that every two points on the plane uniquely determine a line. So we can have a unique line through these two points. And this line is called the second line through the given point. The second line. Okay, let's give the name. This is P1, this is P2 through P1 and P2. Okay, second line through P1 and P2. Whenever you have a line we are interested in the, the slope, what is the slope of this line? The slope of the line, remember, whenever you have a two point, this is x1, y1, x2, y2, then the slope, the slope is y2 minus y1, y1 over x2 minus x1. Right? So that's a slope formula. And here, this is a x2, y2, b, f, b. This is x1, y1, a, f, a. So the slope of the second line is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay? So that's a the slope of the second line through the points A, F, A and B, F, B. Okay? So this is a, the slope of the second line through the point AFA and the BFB. And you check that this formula is exactly the formula of the average rate of the change. So we have one expression, it has two meanings. One is in the algebra, the other one is in the geometry. Algebra is called the average rate of change. Geometry, is a, it represents the slope of the second line. Okay, so let's see the, the example. Example. The example is the following. Suppose g of x is 3x squared minus 2x and plus 3. This is g of x, y on the function. The first question, find the average rate of change from negative 2 to 1, okay, from A to B. Okay, so the average rate of change by definition is a G from A to B, GB minus GA over B minus A. Remember, it's always subtraction. GB minus J over B minus A. So one minus negative one. Uh, well, after the formula, let's try to evaluate. G of one, every place one you have X, it is one. So you get three minus two plus three. This is a G one. This is a G1 minus G negative 2. G negative 2 is a little bit complex. It's a 3 negative 2 squared minus 2 negative 2 and plus 3. Denominator 1 minus negative 2 is 1 plus 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. Okay. Okay. We're going to evaluate. Okay. Evaluation. 3 minus 2 is a 1. 1 plus 3 is 4. Minus. Let's, let's compute the big practice. Negative 2 squared is a 4. 4 times 3, 12. 2 times negative 2, negative 4. Minus negative 4, plus 4. And plus 3. Okay, 
divided by 3. Right? And uh, well, let's, uh, let's compute this. Uh, uh, 12 plus 4, 16. 16 plus 3, 19. So it's a 4 minus 19 over 3. It's negative 15 over 3. It's negative 5. So the average rate of the change of function g from negative 2 to 1 is negative 5. Right? You just do, uh, write down the formula, do the evaluation, and uh, simplify this computation and get the answer. The second, find the equation of the second line through through what point? Through the negative 2 g of negative 2 and 1 g of 1. So we're going to determine the equation of the second line through these two points. These two points on the graph. Uh, actually, if you check carefully, we act, we did the evaluation g of one and uh, g of negative two. This number four, four comes three minus two plus three. This is exactly g of one. So g of one in from the previous computation is equal to four. G of negative two is inside of the parentheses. Remember, after simplification, we get a twelve, four, three, it's a nineteen. So this value is nineteen. So we don't have to compute them again. We just get 4 and 19. And to write the equation of a line, you need one point, you need the slope. Okay, so now you have two points. You have more than one point. That's good. But slope, what is the slope? Slope is, remember, the, the slope of the second line. Fb minus Fa over B minus A. That is exactly Gb minus Ga over B minus A. So the slope is ARC. Slope of the second line is the average rate of the change. So it's equal to negative 5. Right? Understand? So the slope of the second line is the average rate of the change. It's equal to negative 5. You have, when you have the slope, you have a point. Remember, well, you have a point, you have a slope, then it gives you the equation y minus y0 is equal to m times x minus x0. So this is a slope point formula. Now you have two points. You can just pick up either of them. I think I will choose a small number. So I will choose 1 and 4. So the point is uh, x is 1, y is 4. The slope is negative 5. So this, let's apply the formula. So it's y minus y0 is equal to slope times x minus 1 x times 1 let's simplify it uh, negative 5 times it's a negative 5 x negative 5 times negative 1 is plus 5 so y minus 4 is equal to negative 5 plus 5 and you move this 4 to the right side so y is equal to negative 5 plus 5 and plus 4 plus 9 so the equation of the second line through the two points, negative 2 g of negative 2, 1 g of 1, is y equal to negative 5x and plus 9. And in this computation, check that the slope of the second line is average rate of the change. Okay, so that's our, uh, the computation. Okay, so we finish the section 3.3 .3. and next time we're going to start on the next section 3.4 okay so do the exercise make sure you can compute whatever required quantity and you understand what is increasing decreasing local maximum local minimum absolute maximum absolute minimum and plus this uh, average rate of the change slope of the second line through to given point.
So all these concepts are required for our second, second exam. Okay, we'll stop here today. Thank you very much.